We are now entering some fast wind from yet another coronal hole that has rotated into the Earth's strike zone. And believe it or not, the first sunspot from Solar Cycle 25 has been seen. Those stories and more in the news this week. The sun's activity has picked up a bit this week. We have this coronal hole that is now rotating into the Earth's strike zone. It is giving us some fast wind right about now. Things will probably come up to about active conditions, but it's not a huge coronal hole, so it probably won't last all that long. And then meanwhile, we finally have confirmation that we have a new high latitude sunspot. This grouping here has the opposite polarity of what we've been seeing for this recent solar cycle. So this is the right place and the right polarity to be the first sunspot of solar cycle 25. Switching to our M flare threat meter, you can see we've been quiet for quite some time. We have actually had a couple B class flares that were popping around the 10th, and then we even had a C class flare that was eruptive on the 12th. This actually shot a huge solar storm out off the east limb. But since then, that region has rotated into Earth view and everything's quieted down, and things have gotten quieter and quieter and quieter, and it's going to stay that way. Switching to your solar storm conditions, you can see the last time we had activity was back on the 9th, and then things began to calm down and calm down. We've actually had pretty quiet conditions over the past week. And then, bam, you can see on the 18th, that fast wind has hit. It has actually only given us active conditions, which is a little bit less than what the models predicted. So we're not probably expecting a G1 level storm at this point. It'll probably stay active for the next day or so and then calm down. So your aurora photographers, it may not be as big a show at mid-latitudes as you'd like, but you amateur, rad or amateur radio operators, you're probably happy because uh, propagation is probably not being impacted all that much. And even though this solar storm is not very strong, we are getting reports of aurora even around the world, like this beautiful shot from Finland. And we've had some gorgeous aurora in Saskatchewan. And we've even had some Aurora Australis down in Tasmania. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And what you see immediately is that there are two big coronal holes on the backside of the sun. Th these are the things that give us that fast wind and give us some more solar storming. Now, the first one that's rotating into Earth view right now, that one's kind of dissipating, so I don't know how big of a storm it's going to bring us. But just on its heels is a second, bigger coronal hole, and that's the one that gave us some decent storming near the beginning of January. So these are going to rotate into Earth view. We do so have some extra solar storms coming soon within the next two weeks or so. So keep it on your toes, you aurora photographers. Meanwhile, you amateur radio operators, you can see that there are actually a couple active regions that are on the backside, and they'll be rotating into Earth view here in probably the next 10 days. And that will give us a little extra solar flux to keep up propagation. Switching to your solar storm and aurora predictions over the coming week, we are entering that fast wind from that corona hole that's rotating through the Earth's strike zone. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting minor storm conditions with a decent possibility of major storm conditions. And then at mid-latitudes, we're only expecting active conditions with about a 25% chance of a minor storm. These might be a little bit overblown. Now that the fast wind is here, we're kind of looking at it, and maybe it's not going to give us uh, quite that level. See, we'll watch this, uh, this wind as it goes by, but it's probably not going to last all that long, which is a good thing for you ham radio operators, so your disturbances probably won't be too, too bad, and things should quiet down definitely by the weekend. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we are still pretty much in the green. We have absolutely no risk for uh, an M-class flare, so you amateur radio operators should be a bit happy. As far as uh, solar flux is concerned, we've gotten a little bit of a boost because we do have two active regions on the Earth-facing disk right now, and that is keeping the solar flux level a little bit higher. So you amateur radio operators should breathe a sigh of relief. It's not as bad as it has been over the past year, especially early in January. So propagation should be pretty good, and things will continue like that for at least another week. So the space weather has picked up after a bit of a lull. We have some high-speed wind that's hitting Earth now and causing a bit of a disturbance. It's not as big as the models predicted, so you aurora photographers, you're probably going to get a good show only at high latitudes. The mid-latitudes, you may only see some pulsating aurora, if that, so you may have to wait for the next set of solar storms that are going to be coming here in the next couple weeks. You amateur radio operators and GPS operators, however, you're probably very happy because propagation and disturbances aren't nearly as big as we originally thought.
Now the other nice thing is that we finally do have confirmation in the scientific community that we do have the very first sunspot of the new solar cycle. So for those of you who thought the sun was going to sleep and we were going to have another mini ice age for the next 70 years, don't worry about it anymore. The sun is still very well alive and kicking. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.